Today we're going to find out how far we can get this 719cc turbocharged diesel Saturn coupe to go on a single gallon of diesel fuel. Now if you've been following this project, you may be aware that we recently completed a fuel economy test and the Saturn coupe got 59.28 miles per US gallon, which ain't half bad. But is that the best it can do? Well, yes and no. You see, this car got 59.28 miles per gallon while being driven normally, or in other words, we made no attempt to economize. And what that means is, we didn't alter our driving habits in an effort to squeeze out every little bit from the fuel. And the reason we didn't do that is simple. It's not realistic fuel economy. So is it possible to get better fuel economy from this car? Well, that's a good question. For today's experiment, we're going to drive 100 miles and try to keep the speed between 45 and 50 miles per hour. The purpose of keeping the speed in this range is to minimize the losses due to aerodynamic drag. Now just a quick note before we go on. Whenever aerodynamics are mentioned, I get overwhelmed with suggestions on how to improve the aerodynamics on this car, and I certainly appreciate the comments, but as I mentioned before in other videos, the appearance of the car has to remain as normal looking as possible, and that's to avoid attracting the attention of the cops. Eh, it's unfortunate, but that's why we don't do aero mods. I hope that makes sense. But if it makes you feel better, we put a stealth belly pan under the engine bay and that'll be our little secret. Anyway, as I was saying, we plan on keeping the speed in today's experiment between 45 and 50 miles per hour. Now driving this slow may sound simple, but it's not. And the reason it's not simple is we have to share the road to folks who actually have some place to go. Now the good news is, we have access to a number of paved roads here in rural Kansas and we can conduct this experiment without interfering with traffic. So how realistic will this test be? Well, the data we get will certainly be real, but keep in mind we're limiting the speed to avoid losses due to aerodynamic drag, so this extreme test will demonstrate what the car is capable of in a Mad Max post-apocalyptic dystopian type world. Now, since we've done fuel economy tests in the past at normal speeds, you may wonder how realistic those tests were. Hmm, I've actually been wondering this myself. So before we take the turbo diesel Saturn out for an extreme fuel economy test, let's do an experiment before we do today's experiment. So here's the plan. We're going to test this 1995 Saturn station wagon, which is perfectly normal in every way possible, and we normally use this car as a chase vehicle and routinely drive it into Wichita to pick up supplies. In the real world, this car will deliver an average of 32 miles per gallon. Not too bad. But more importantly, this mileage figure represents real-world fuel economy. So the plan is to drive this unmodified Saturn wagon on the fuel economy route here at the Hillbilly Proving Grounds and see if there's a difference between Hillbilly test results and real-world results. I reckon this will help us provide more realistic data. Anyway, let's just jump into the car and I'll explain more as we drive. And here we go. Now of course, off camera we filled the fuel tank and zeroed the odometer, and all we really have to do is drive. Keep in mind we're testing this car as is, and what that means is we didn't change anything like adding extra air to the tires or whatever. The car is exactly the way it was when it was driven in the real world. Also, no special driving techniques are being used because that's not how this car is normally driven. For the audience, this test will take a few moments. However, for me, I'm going to drive 200 of the most boring miles in a boring car, and I'm not going to do squat to maximize fuel economy, because that's not the way we do fuel economy tests on our wacky project vehicles. So this car has the higher performance twin cam engine and the close ratio MP3 5-speed manual transmission. These twin cam models don't do as well as the single cam models as far as fuel economy goes. Now in the real world, this car gets 32 miles per gallon, which seems about right for a twin cam and a 5-speed. I guess I should define what real world driving is when it comes to this car. So the 32 miles per gallon that this car normally gets is based on 30% city driving and 70% highway driving. And when I say city driving, eh, in the parts of Wichita that this car goes, there ain't any real traffic. So it's not like New York or Los Angeles type city driving. As sort of a side project, this summer we're going to modify the transmission on this car to provide a better overdrive ratio. And if that goes well, we'll do some other things too. It would be nice if this car got around 40 miles to the gallon when driving in the real world. These older Saturns are very durable and will more or less last forever. The biggest problem with this type of Saturn is it's common for them to burn oil. Now this car doesn't seem to burn any oil at all, but it does have a slow oil leak, and it leaks about a half quart every month. 
Anyway, through the magic of video editing, we're now done and it's time to refuel the car. Let's see how much fuel it consumed. So for the fuel economy tests that require filling at the gas station, the method that we use to add fuel before and after each test is to set the pump to go on at the slowest speed until it clicks off, and then wait a few moments for the fuel to settle, and then add more until the pump clicks again. Of course, we always use the same pump, even if it means waiting. So we consumed 5.420 gallons of gasoline, and according to the odometer, we drove around the hillbilly fuel economy route for 200.2 miles. In the real world, this car gets an average of 32 miles per gallon, and at the Hillbilly Test Track, well, we did a lot better, and the car delivered 37 miles per gallon. Actually, it was 36.97 for the fact checkers, but I'm calling it 37. This is definitely interesting, and I'm glad we did this test. In the future, when we do fuel economy tests, I'll make sure to mention this and possibly factor in an adjustment, because it looks like the Hillbilly Proving Grounds provides data that's more in line with highway driving. Hmm... Anyway, none of this matters for the extreme mileage test that we're about to do on a turbo diesel Saturn. And that's because the extreme mileage test is only realistic in a Mad Max type world. So the fuel situation on this car is just a little bit different. And that's because this car only has a four gallon tank that we stuck in the trunk. Before starting this extreme fuel economy test, we have to make sure the tank has plenty of fuel. And to do this, well, someone has to stick their finger in a tank. Mm-hmm. And it looks like we're going to need some fuel. So pretty much a random amount of fuel is added to the tank, and the goal is to have the fuel level about an inch or so below the cap. By the way, diesel fuel is getting expensive again, and I reckon this stuff cost a few cents south of four bucks a gallon. Anyway, it's probably hard to see, but the fuel level is about where we want it. Now the trick is to measure the distance from the top of the tank to the surface of the fuel in the tank, and for that we'll use a combination square and a drill bit. So the drill bit just lays across the tank opening and provides a surface for the combination square. And after a bit of adjusting, we're able to measure the distance between the top of the tank and the surface of the fuel, and in this case it's 46 millimeter. Now after we finish the fuel economy run, all we'll need to do is figure out how much fuel it takes to bring the level back to 46 millimeters below the cap. Meh, it's simple and very accurate. So with plenty of air in the tires and plenty of fuel in the tank, we set out to do our extreme fuel economy run. All right, and we're back at it. This time around, we're going to see what the absolute maximum fuel economy this car will deliver. If you're new to the channel, well, this car has been fitted with a Kubota D722 Super Mini diesel engine. The engine was rated by the factory to produce 20 horsepower, but since we added a turbo and did some fiddling with the fuel settings, well, the engine's now making a lot more power. How much? No idea. So driving down the road in this diesel powered car at 45 miles per hour is key to this experiment, but there's a lot more going on than just driving slow, and that's what makes this experiment difficult. Obviously I need to monitor the speedometer to hold the speed steady, but I also need to keep an eye on the exhaust gas temperature gauge. Now in this experiment, we're not worried about excessive temperatures, however we do need to keep an eye on the temp and try to keep it as low as possible. You see, the exhaust gas temperature is probably the only feedback available to tell us how hard the engine's working. And for this naturally lean running diesel engine, the lower the temps, the better the fuel economy will get. During this test, I'm trying to keep the temperature between 550 and 650 degrees Fahrenheit while holding the car at 45 miles per hour. It's a balancing act for sure. So speaking about exhaust gas temperatures, I can see in the comments section that a few viewers with gasoline engine backgrounds are confused. And I get it. Diesel engines run extremely lean, and this lean mixture produces low exhaust gas temperatures. When the exhaust gas temperature is elevated, adding more air to the system will actually lower the temp. It's exactly the opposite of a gasoline engine, and that's where I believe the confusion is. Another thing that seems to confuse some of the viewers is, when I mention exhaust gas temperatures, I'm referring to the temperature of the combustion process that's taking place in the combustion chamber or cylinder. 
The best way to measure the combustion temperature is to measure the exhaust gas temperatures with a probe on the exhaust manifold. So to be clear, we're not concerned with the temperatures of the exhaust manifold or the associated pipes, we're concerned with the temperatures of the exhaust gases flowing through the manifold and pipes. Because the temperature of these gases directly represent the temperature of what's going on in the combustion chamber. The manifold and pipes and all that stuff outside the engine, meh, that stuff can handle the high temperatures no problem. Keep in mind, I really want people to understand these experiments, and I try to explain stuff as best I can, but I also assume most of the viewers have some understanding of the processes involved. Now, it's okay not to fully understand everything, and if this sort of thing interests you, then sometimes a little research on the viewer's behalf may help clarify what's going on. Thankfully, we're done with the test, and now let's take a look at a snapshot of the GPS screen. In today's test, we covered 101.3 miles in this three-cylinder, 719cc turbocharged, intercooled, diesel-powered Saturn coupe. <laughs> the total time I spent in the driver's seat was a painful 2 hours and 23 minutes to go 100 miles. Oof. Our average speed was 42 miles per hour, and that's a little bit faster than one of those crappy scooters that seem to be popular whenever fuel prices go up. Anyway, traveling at such a low speed effectively makes this car a rolling roadblock. But like I mentioned earlier, we did this test on the back roads here in rural Kansas, and we didn't annoy other drivers with our shenanigans. Remember, the reason we went so slow was to avoid generating aerodynamic drag, and that allowed us to maximize fuel economy in this extreme test. So, let's find out how much fuel we consumed. Well, <laughs> my measuring equipment's all in metric. Anyway, it looks like we used 5.250 liters of diesel fuel. So, let me do some quick calculations to satisfy my comrades here in the States. Well, I was not expecting this. So this rolling roadblock that weighs 2,046 pounds managed to get 73.40 miles per U.S. gallon of diesel fuel. Hmm, you know, we didn't build this car for fuel economy, but if driven at moped speeds, it'll definitely give some impressive numbers. So obviously this ain't realistic for real-world driving. I reckon if we drove this car on the semi-busy streets of Wichita, there'd be a lot of pissed off people. So I definitely don't recommend driving slow, but it is interesting. So let's review today's results. Well, the first thing we discovered was, when driving the unmodified Saturn station wagon, we found that the fuel economy test conducted at the Hillbilly Proving Grounds represents mostly highway driving. And that's fine, but what that means is, the 59.28 miles per gallon that the Saturn Coupe got on previous tests, well, they may need to be adjusted for real-world driving. Now, today's extreme mileage test, well, the results are not realistic because the test conditions weren't realistic. But no matter how you look at it, the car did deliver 73.40 miles to the gallon, and we did it without upsetting other drivers on the road. So I reckon in a sort of rural environment, these results are realistic enough, but keep in mind you might be better off riding a moped. Anyway, I had fun today, and I hope you did as well. If you like what you saw, click on the like thingy. It lets us know we're going in the right direction, and it really helps this channel grow. It also allows us to work on more fun experiments. Also, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. That really helps the channel the most. And why is that? Well, subscribing allows us to continue these experiments with one-of-a-kind custom-built cars that you won't see anywhere else on YouTube. These videos are fun and educational, and we hope to continue to grow this channel so we can offer a lot more entertainment. Besides, subscribing is free, and everybody likes free stuff. Until next time.